Hey there, YouTube. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better, although I may not sound like I'm doing much better, but I'm still just kind of getting over the cold thing. Um, last week, uh, I went over a intersection um, phasing, uh, so a traffic signal phasing, um, and we drew an intersection a lot like this. This one looks a little bit better. And today... Um, I decided what I was going to do, and don't mind this little arrow here, it's from another drawing. Um, I decided we were going to talk about, oops, this is drying out, ring and barrier and B-A R-R-I-E R. -R Lovely. I like how that's a little A and all the rest of them are big. Isn't that good? Just because. Why not? It's like, it's like uh, typing and, and, uh, and doing things on the internet with autocorrect has just like ruined everything as far as um, caring about those sort of things. So, uh, Okay. What Ring and Barrier is about is talking about how we sequence these phases at an intersection basically so that um, conflicting phases uh, never run together logically. So when we're talking about how we sequence this intersection so that cars that can run together um, on paper can only run together logically also. So Let's talk about our phases, our vehicle phases. There's phase one, okay. Phase two. I'm trying to use the grid on the paper here so it makes sense. Phase three. Uh, phase four. Phase five. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay. Now. We'll draw a little grid here so everybody's got a nice little square that belongs to them. Okay. That looks pretty good. I know if any of you guys are OCD, you're probably like losing your minds right now. Okay. This here. Hi. And if you look up Ring and Barrier, there's a lot of really beautiful diagrams out there. This big black stripe that I'm doing here is what we call our barrier, okay? That's the barrier right there, okay? And um, what the barrier is basically is to um, separate, um, as you can see, the phases that are on the main street. Let's call this... Main Street <laughs> and Side Street, okay? Um, but basically so that conflicting phases stay separate from each other, okay? In the realm of sequencing the intersection. Now what we call our ring is basically just these cycles as they operate like this, okay? This top section here is called ring one. Usually you'll see it represented as an R. And then this is ring two, okay? Now, as a traffic signal is timing, this is the basic, bare bones, basic way that a signal will time. And I want you to go in the field and observe this um, at, at an intersection near your house or whatever. When you're out driving around, just pull over, grab a milkshake or something, and just watch the light. Watch how the signal operates. And typically what you're going to see is that you're going to see the left turn phases come up before the through movement phases at a busy eight phase intersection, right? 
So if you've ever noticed that you're trying to make a left turn, uh, even though you have to wait for some time for the light to cycle, at least after the side street is all done running, you might be the next guy to go. So logically, uh, the way that we're looking at this cycle is that this is timing at the same time as this. So one and five will come up together, okay, right? And sometimes you'll notice that um, one of these only has like one car and then another one will have a bunch of cars, right? So then in that case, let's say um, phase one only had one car, but phase five had five cars, right? So then what happens is that the next phase in that ring will serve, right? So then it's perfectly okay for five and two, right? Five and two to run together. So, so we want these cars to get to go, right? So we're looking at phase one and phase five. They come up together. So you've got a green arrow here and you've got a green arrow here. And then there was only one here, okay? On phase one, there was one car, okay? Just for the sake of uh, making uh, numbers easy for me. But there's five cars here, and so they're still going. But after this guy goes yellow and then to red, who can go next? The phase two can go next in this ring. So then phase two and five are running together, okay? And so then you've got these guys getting to go. And then these guys that are on phase six, they can't go yet because phase five is not done. So they've got to wait a little while longer. But then eventually the fifth car is passed through, and then we've gapped out, um, and we have made it to a yellow, and then a red arrow here. And so now this left turn is done. And now the next number in ring two can serve. So now we know that two and six can run together. These guys can run together, right? The same thing can happen the other way around. What if, what if there was only one car here? on phase five, right? What would happen? Phase six and one could run together at the same time, okay? So phase six and one are going, so these guys on two had to wait, and so on, so on. None of these phases that are here, none of these phases that are here can run at the same time as these phases that are over here. That's what this barrier is here for. It's a barrier. We can't run those faces together. That would be a conflict and that would cause a bad accident. Okay? But when two and six are done, you know, and these rings are complete, only then when these are done, we can cross the barrier and start serving three and seven. So two and six are now red, and then three and and seven can come up. So Phase three and phase seven can run, and, and so on. It can do basically the same thing that it did on this street. So if there's only, let's say there's no cars on phase seven, but there's a couple of cars here on phase three. Phase three and eight can come up at the same time, allow these left turners to go, and then once this uh, eastbound left turn is complete, then phase four gets to go. Okay, and that is what ring and barrier is all about. Uh, it is basically just a way of um, sequencing the directions, the phases at a signal so that uh, there will never be a conflict. And this, some, some uh, smart individual. I've never actually figured out who came up with the ring and barrier mode, but whoever came up with an eight phase sequencing like this uh, was really quite brilliant. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a standard logic problem, right? Because we know, we know which directions you can go without hitting the other guy, basically, but, you know, without this, Without this, and you just pull up to an intersection without any, um, you know, it's all willy-nilly. Now, there are, uh, there are some circumstances where intersections are served 
what's called an eight-phase sequential, where um, whether or not there's a barrier, it, it doesn't matter because every single phase, and that pretty much just looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that every phase serves on its own, okay? Um, every, every phase serves all by itself, you know, um, which, as you could only imagine, would take forever. For this left turn, okay, then, uh, then this through movement, then this left turn, then this through move. I mean, it would just take forever. But uh, this is what you're going to see at most intersections. And so, like I said, I want you to go find an intersection somewhere and uh, and just check it out. You know, when you're out and about, headed somewhere, stop, uh, you know, pull over at uh, your favorite burger joint or whatever. I don't know. You know, go grab some french fries and feed the seagulls or something. I don't know. Um, now, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about here when it came to traffic logic, and that is overlaps. And really quick, what an overlap is, is another phase that runs at the same time as another phase, okay? And so, um, in a TS1 cabinet, we have 12 channels, and then in a, in a TS2 uh, cabinet, we have uh, technically 16 channels that we can work with, four of which are overlaps in both of those cabinets, okay? But what we... Uh, an overlap channel is, is, is basically another place where a load switch is in the cabinet uh, that we provide voltage to another indication, okay, to allow for another movement at the intersection. So let's say when phase three is running, okay, there's another right turn lane here next to phase two for the southbound movement, okay? The southbound movement has a right turn. And we only want that green light to be running when phase three is on, okay? So, um, typically overlaps that run with left turn phasing would correspond as a letter that counts with I know this is getting busy now. <laughs> that counts with uh, in sequence to these guys. And this would be overlap A, B, C, and D. Imagine if we had it on all the corners. These right turners would come up at the same time as these guys. And I know you've seen it, that there's a right turn pocket, like a little lane where you can make a right turn on, onto one of these streets here. And then there's a green arrow that comes up for you that lets you know that it's okay for you to make that right turn. And the way we do this is in the cabinet, we call this an overlap, okay, an overlap. And just like uh, usually on the prints or whatever, when we have an overlap represented, it's in this ring and barrier configuration that overlap A runs with one, phase one, and overlap B runs with phase three. So this would be overlap B right here, see? Because it runs at the same time as phase three. I know this is an awful, awful lot of information for one little video, but hopefully it helps you. And if you're confused, you can ask questions. Otherwise, you can add information um, uh, down below. You can ask questions in the comments section. Or just Google it, man. All of this stuff is out there. And uh, there is what's called the M-U-T-C-D, Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. And you can actually look up all of the information based upon how traffic signals are designed to operate, and uh, you can learn about this stuff. So, um, There's also uh, 
different states have designed traffic design websites and things like that. I guarantee if you if you Google any of these terms, this kind of stuff will come up. But hopefully I've been helpful. Uh, hit like, subscribe, and then the bell thing. I think the bell is like gives you notifications or something. I don't know. But uh, catch you guys later. Hopefully this was helpful. Cheers.